Hello, Phillies and Gentle Giants. I'm Vanilla Beam, and welcome to Vanilla Views. Now, what am I going to be viewing today? Nope. I can do it. Can't make me. I haven't even reviewed the first one yet. Ugh, fine. I guess I'll view this one. I mean, it couldn't be as bad as the first Equestria Girls. Right? So, here we go, the third installment of the Equestria Girls movie series. Seriously, why the hell is this movie a series? Can't they just make a series series? Anyway, this is Friendship Games. In this movie, we are treated to the friendly competition between two high schools, CHS and Crystal Prep. It's good versus evil, assholes versus goody two-shoes, and what's at stake? With this device, I can track and contain the bizarre energy coming from Canterlot High! A side story that has nothing to do with the games, doesn't it? You know what? I'm gonna do something different here. We all know this is gonna be bad. Since I want to make this faster, I'm gonna compile a list and call it The Top 6 Reasons Why Friendship Games Was Mediocre. Without further ado, let's begin! Number 1, a cliche plot. First of all, you thought this movie was just about the friendship games? <laughs> Silly child, <laughs> shame on you. No, we'll talk about that later. But right now, we need to talk about the idea of the games. In this movie, it's merely a competition between two high schools for the mere pleasure to go into the other one's faces and go na 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 na. Which in my opinion, I can see that being a concept to work with, if I was invested in the situation. What is it that Fluttershy said? We'll be fighting against a school full of meanies. Not everything has to be magical to be important. You're right, Fluttershy. It doesn't have to be magical. But it has to be something interesting at stake for it to be important. I mean, the events don't benefit the students, the events aren't publicized, and all in all, it just comes off as a cliche with no real payoff. Oh, and guess what? In the end, everyone ends up winning because teamwork and friendly ship and all the reasons why the participation ribbons exist. Number two, the broken school system. So our real plot involves this world's Twilight Sparkle wanting to get accepted into an independent study program so she can continue studying away from the human race's filthy little quivers. But the only way to get in is to have Miss Bad Guy Lady, Principal Cinch, send Twilight's application through. Now, Principal Cinch puts Twilight into a corner, saying that unless she does compete in the friendship games, Twilight's application will be denied. Now, in more realistic situations, that is considered blackmail. And I don't know about you, but I believe Twilight can instruct Dean Cadence that the principal is abusing her power. She could also go to her parents, her brother, the Board of Education, fucking anybody! But no, she feels the need to just keep it silent and just go with it. Not to mention, I'm not sure, but I believe student records exist and are very helpful in determining the future of student applications. Again, just have to assume that they don't exist. Just like how you can also bring children in with no records at all and just accept them into your school. Oh, but that will come another time. But next up... Number three, over the top challenges. Now let's review the games in themselves. Now, in the beginning, it's all standard academic shit. You know, baking, birdhouse construction, Bunsen burner, spelling bee, and simple mathematics. Oh my god, do none of you know how to spell? Anyway, standard stuff to make our fellow students appear like they have the capability to find a career besides a fast food janitor. But then comes round two, where our students must run the gauntlet. Okay, I'm all for a challenging athletic obstacle course, but really? I think Sunset put it best. Am I the only one who thinks this is overkill? Now repeat after me. What I'm doing is stupid, I know it's stupid, but fuck you, I have no ideas. I mean, in one of the shorts, we clearly see the gym team preparing for the games, and Pinky Dash are there to spy on their progress. By the way, nice moral to teach your kids. So why the hell don't we get something normal, like maybe Shot Put, or 50-yard Dash, or maybe something more realistic, an obstacle course with hurdles and ropes and shit? But we gots to have archery, roller skating, and motocross! How in the hell did this go through the non-existent school board of education standards? I'm sure whatever is at stake is worth the lives of the students. Especially when the freak magical derp ends up popping everywhere on the field and nearly kills a couple of Crystal Prep kids. And still they want to continue the stupid games. And after all that, the CH kids tie up the scores. 
What shall the tiebreaker be? A simple, unexciting, and uncreative game of Capture the Flag. I mean, seriously, Capture the Flag in the fucking rain! You really couldn't go the, with the full version of the Hunger Games? Nope. And being CHS and Crystal Prep have never gone into the tiebreaker, this has to be a last minute decision. Great job, Celestia. You've proven once again to be a true leader. Number four, not as impactful musical numbers. Let's talk about the music. The music we got in the last movie, just awesome. Even now, I still find myself humming these songs whenever I try not to get crushed in the park. Now, we're in a brand new movie. What are the lovely tunes we got now? I know there's more that's out there, and I just haven't found it yet. Um, this is slightly less awesome. Okay, this soundtrack has some ups and downs to it. Like, the rally song was fine. The wanting more song is above cliche. The... Aka Deka was a nice segue to move the competition along. The intro song has a catchy riff to it, but of course, the best song of the movie was the villain song. Though, the only thing that ruins it is the lack of atmosphere in the area. It's being performed in the middle of a public area, in front of screaming students. If it was at least in a dark room with broken spotlights, it would have made it more menacing. But no, every song must suffer the same fate of being more bland and cliche as the predecessor in Rainbow Rocks. It could have been worse, though. There could be songs about open doors or some shit. Number 5. Unmemorable Villains I absolutely love the Dazzlings. They have a great design, villainous plot, mesmerizing singing voices, and character traits that make every time they appear on screen a treat of great comedic possibilities. What the hell did Friendship Games give us? Well, rather than make the obvious choice of giving King Sombra more screen time and making him the principal of this campus, we get a brand new character, Principal Atticus Fi- I mean, Abacus Cinch. She's just your standard preppy, frou-frou, <laughs> kind of villain. She uses her power to move around this broken school system and force Twilight to compete in the friendship games. In the meantime, Twilight must also compete with her schoolmates. Who are they? You tell me! I literally don't know who these bitches are, and I know next to nothing about their personalities or character traits. I only remember Sour Sweet, who was the sort of bipolar student. You are such a sweetie! I am watching you. And Sugarcoat, who I think is the anti-Applejack by being brutally observant. Or maybe she's like Pinkie Pie? Or maybe she's just a mixture of Sai Kisaragi and Cloud Chaser. Other than that, either characters have little to absolutely diddly dick of character development. I can honestly say these are the worst villains MLP has ever come with to date. As for Cinch, I could care less about her precious reputation. It's not really something that important for me to give a damn, especially when she doesn't care about it either. I mean, choosing to continue the games after her students nearly got killed in the easily deadly motocross, in my opinion, would surely damper her reputation. Then again, the board allows this, so who am I to complain? Number six, lazy and confusing climax. And probably the most confusing and disappointing moment of the movie. So what happens? Well, when deciding the final event shall be a riveting and exciting game of Capture the Flag, Twilight is once again blackmailed into using magic that she has been capturing. 
Oh yeah, the main plot is about Twilight being a snoop and unknowingly capturing magic, and it's getting too full and hard to contain. So now dumbass Cinch and the rest of the Lollipop Guild convince Twilight through a very catching village song to quote, unleash the magic. Unleash the magic, unleash the magic. If we lose, then you're to blame. So when Twilight does release the magic, the magic then consumes her and transforms her into a horrifying demon and wants to take over both worlds. Okay, first off, this is the magic of friendship that has turned her into a demon. Kind of a weird twist of fate. Secondly, why is Twilight wanting to take over the world? I mean, she never really wanted to take over anything. She only wanted to understand what was going on here, and just wanted to go outside of her current environment to seek out more to discover. A pretty noble cause, I must say. Now Sunset Shimmer sought power, and when she donned the element of magic, it turned her into a demon, which is appropriate for someone who wants to take over the world. And she only had the magic of one element, which was just magic. Twilight here has five elements, and the elements of true friendship. Maybe generosity isn't as nice as we made it out to be. But anyways, this happens, we see Equestria through various portals, only like two ponies inside apparently, and the only one who can save us is Sunset Shimmer, who uses the magic of the humane fi- wait, I thought the magic was drained out of their bodies, how the fuck does this work? Anyways, Sunset Shimmer becomes a deity and shows forgiveness to Twilight, who never did anything wrong to begin with, and this somehow tainted magic was the reason that she turned evil to begin with, again. It would make more sense if Cinch was the one to turn into a demon, but nope, she'd rather run like a pussy and endanger her students even more. Again, way to keep up your reputation. So Shimmer sends Twilight into the Matrix, is all, let me help you, and she's all, okay, and everything becomes all hunky-dory. Cinch continues to care more about the games and says she'll go to the board about this. D between you and me, I don't think they give a damn. And the others are all, yeah, good luck explaining all that magic shit, you loony. Yeah. Because I'm sure no one was walking about and saw this. And this. And recently this. And that's friendship games. What else is worth to be said about this special? I mean, the other main characters are just stereotypes that spout lines about their one-dimensional traits. He could be anything. Anything? How will I ever pick the right outfit? The ending Twilight scene is just a way to say, Ooh, look at this! And everything else wrong about this is just a nick pick that isn't even worth mentioning. Now, is there anything good to say? Of course. The animation certainly improved since the first special. The songs are at least memorable after listening to them a few times. The acting is A-plus as always. And the humor definitely shows whenever it pops up, mostly stemming from Pinkie Pie this time. At least this piece of human waste is lingering in the background like he's supposed to. Now, with the confirmation of an Equestria Girl 6 in the making, it only brings me to say that you guys really should just consider making this a spin-off show. So at least you can put better effort into your writing that makes the original show the great show that it is. This series is just to sell Monster High ripoff dolls, and it definitely shows by the quality of the writing. If you actually like these movies, then it's worth watching it once. If you're a huge fan of ponies and not humans, and it's alright if you pass it up, you aren't gonna miss much. Now, since this movie fits right in the middle of the other two specials, I wonder how Equestria Girls 4 is gonna end up. Between you and me, it's gonna suck. Phew! Finally, that's done and over with. Now I can just go and get some rip- Not again! Again. Hey, Vanilla! Hey, I- oh, right, I forgot. I'm freaking giant compared to you. Sorry I bumped into you! Oh, it's alright! Glad it was only a bump and not a stop. Anyway, what are you doing here? Joker didn't come by this time! Oh, I'm not looking for Joker. Besides, I used Chaos Magic to make him grow back. In fact... <laughs> Guess what we get to do together? I get to show you the way out before I go catch some Z's? Nope! We get to do the Season 5 Recap!